Hey, hey, hey. This is Courier Boat Doctor. Boy, this thing looks like it's wriggle, ready to go. This is your swivel here. Got the horseshoe seats in it. Got five persons at 1451, 115 max. I put it on this display to check my uh, the GPS and tack, see what we're doing. Uh, and then I'll show you a little bit about this. These garments are actually really good units. All the way down to their little, um, oh, I don't know, Lawrence makes, or is it Garment Striker? Ah, well, they make the little garment. I forgot what the model was on that. But anyway, the Garmin uh, is a good unit, especially their depth finders. And they're easy for the, the riggers, for me, and for the customer. They're user-friendly. And they actually got one of the better depth finders than uh, I, I'd say most of these and better GPS system uh, built in. You can throw it underneath there and still get satellite. So these are a good unit. You really can't screw up with these and they're bulletproof. So anyway, you got a tachometer, you got a fuel gauge. I went ahead and put 25 gallons of non-ethanol in it. I always run non-ethanol. You don't have to, uh, but I do it just because maybe I fill it up or something. Guy comes in, hey, what did you put in there? Oh, I put ethanol. Oh, ethanol, why did you do that? You should have put non-ethanol. Oh, drain the tank. You no, know, so that way I just put non-ethanol. You can run ethanol. If you run it at least once a month, you'll be okay. You still need to add Startron to your get, no matter if you get non-ethanol. Now I say, if you really want to be concerned, what you want to do is on these, uh, maybe the last time you use it and you're going to put it away for about three, four months, is maybe that last month prior run a tank of non-ethanol through it and then make sure she's down to like a quarter tank of fuel or full either or not in between i prefer a quarter or under beautiful day out here today you can see to well, one no wind probably got a slight incoming uh, it's going to get into slack uh, so anyway on the motors and run the motors once a, uh, every 30 days if you can if not two months put the earmuffs on fire it up let that main one run for about 10 minutes the other one 15. uh if you're going to store it for a long period of time on the kicker drain the gas out of that the motor just let it run until it runs out and on the carb drain the carb uh and then uh, when you get ready to use it that fuel line there uh, i would pump it into a take the end off and then pump it into a like a quart jar to get see if there was any water in that line water i can get out particles are a little bit different it is cable steer 115 13 by 17 pitch prop on that 99 11 by 7. that 99 got a 25 yamaha gear case got 70 percent more backup power it also i could put a 20 horse two stroke back there and on the takeoff that 99 will heat it up because of the prop larger prop you got an opening on the back part by the gear case that's to relieve the back pressure for reverse got a fillet table on that and we're just floating around here a little bit stereo all you do is you push this on right here and that'll come on horn works you don't have a live well knife Dowd lights they work bilge pump works wiper works so there's your stereo you can run sirius you can run ipod you can run i uh, i everything on there uh bluetooth wireless you name it you can do it uh, and then back here, you got your downriggers. Those are electric. They do have the counter right here. You can put your pole into here. They do swivel. You got this where you can swivel them out and locks. This releases them. And you, they do release you. You can use 15 pound weights all day long on these Scotties. They're, they're lifetimes. Uh, you can get a lock kit that locks this and your swivel because those are about 7,500 bucks just for the swivel. And then you can buy a lock for this for temporary. If you're gonna let, leave it outside and travel and leave it overnight somewhere, I'd probably say, uh, get the lock thing, but uh, like say you left it out at a marina like over there for oh boy What a beautiful day. Wow. This is now this is summer. My god uh, Anyway uh, Overnight and stuff the lock for that one would be okay But if you're gonna leave it for a week and then come back to the like the lake or whatever I would say probably uh, Take them off and put them in your truck or something you got a little paint missing right there And then you pull this and that comes off and if you want it completely off then what you do is pull that pin and pull that whole pole out. Dual battery switch, okay. The seacock valve is way back underneath there. You almost have to loosen up that battery right there with that strap. Turn it and get your hand down there. That shuts the water off to the worst down. And then the primer valves are kind of in a tight spot. But once I primed them, it's pretty easy. You probably can get your hands in there and squeeze them. Yeah, they're not going to say if it's out a month, maybe a couple squeezes and it'll be okay on the fuel. 
Okay, so then what we do is I put this out here so it wouldn't hit the tiller handle. So we're just gonna trim this down and we're gonna start with the kicker. Now I haven't fired this up yet. So what you wanna do is put that into gear, give it three full pumps, boom, boom, boom. Bring that back, leave it there. You wanna pull that choke out when it starts up. Push it back in. And then you just go back like that. Now I'm gonna put it in reverse. If you watch that dog, see it stopped it that quick. Look how fast. That goes, okay? And now if you lock this motor out and you can play with this, how it's turned, and I'm gonna give that full throttle just this friction, right here. I'm gonna tighten that up. I'm gonna get where I need to go first. Right there. that in gear I can un release this friction then I can play my fish and by the way I'd be out here fishing if I was you the water camp's still a little warm but they're out here and then when you're done you just push that back put that in neutral with the kill switch uses friction to tighten it up trim that up just like that Okay, so then you just, if this here is in gear, whoops, ain't gonna start, gotta bring it back, click, fires up, that's off, it'll buzz, and it will not start. So that's how you know the safety line. You're, if it doesn't start it, after you do all this, your battery switch isn't on, but you can always tell because your tachometer and your fuel gauge, you can turn your key switch on. Okay, so anyway, on the run out, just so you know, Oh, yellow light. Dang, dang, dang. We better hurry up. Boat doctor's always in a hurry. Uh, now, I forgot where I was going. Where am I going? I'm in the river bay. Very nice. Hmm. Oh, motors. Okay. Uh, that motor's been run brand new. Everybody's worried about that because of the, okay, your pamphlet. Your motor's going to tell you one thing on oil. Uh, internet will tell you one thing. Um, your book's going to tell you another thing on break-ins and stuff uh, I'll just tell you my opinion okay so the oil keep it halfway up the hash marks okay don't fill it to the top if you do drain it out uh, try at the end of the day if you're just putting like this all day long with that 115 and the 99 at the end of the day the last five minutes I would say run it wide open 
you know, the kicker you're done, run a wide open thing to carbon out. Main motor, uh, from here to that pylon, run a wide open. But now if you were out there that day and you open it wide open a few times, you're done. You don't have to do that. But these motors have been running two hours at the factory. They went like a 94, 99, 94 to a 98%. That motor never sees a shop for warranty. So they run them, we run them, I take them down here, take them easy on them. When I set up the electronics, I always do the kicker because you don't want to troll for the first two hours really on either one of those. So I kind of work the little kicker, bump it, bump it. You're only going to do five to seven miles an hour. Uh, so in about two hours, if you want to open it up, open that big one up. It ain't going to hurt it. I'd rather have that than have you troll, but don't troll for two hours. Okay? And let's see here. Click, 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 click. Okay, so then what I do, I'm idling around like you can see. So then I got my speed here, my tack here. So then what I do is I check like seconds to plane. I got a four second rule. Okay? So when I hit this. Wow. Two seconds for 19 miles an hour, about 3,000 RPM. That is awesome. Four seconds is good. That's a good hole. You get two seconds. That's about the best you're going to get. You can get a 1.5, but man, that's almost like this one. Uh, you know, you put a 91 15, you put one uh, 15, and that gets you up quicker. Uh, but excellent hole. Like I say, that that put her up like oh, just just at two seconds. And then what I do is I trim it down. It's all the way down. I hit it here, and it has bell rise. That's good. I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so this is playing speed right here. That's about normal. About 21 miles an hour, about 30, 3600 RPM. And I go cruise, I hit this. And these 115s will turn 63 